Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and as many of you likely know, over the past few years, multiple fanfiction have served as the jumping off point for published works. City of Bones by Cassandra Clare was once a Harry Potter fanfiction. Fifty Shades of Grey was famously a Twilight fanfiction. After by Anna Todd, Point Pleasant by Jen Archer Wood, and even The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, an example so blatant that even the cover art seems to be directly modeled after Rey and Kylo Ren's physical appearance. And while I think it's great that fan communities are able to generate works that get out into the real world, there are some, let's say, quirks of fanfiction that I'd personally prefer stay off the shelves. Here are my biggest pet peeves about fanfic. This first pet peeve of mine is one of my most intense, and it's actually the quickest way I'm able to tell the difference between a book I'm really going to like and a book I might think is a little bit, like, just not to my taste, I guess. Um, and that is how the characters are described and how much time is spent describing their very specific physical characteristics. First, I'm going to read you the description of a character from a very, very famous fanfiction, and then I'm going to read to you a book I've read recently and the way that they introduce that character physically. Hi, my name is Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way, and I have long ebony black hair with purple streaks and red tips that reaches my mid-back and icy blue eyes like limpid tears, and a lot of people tell me I look like Amy Lee. I'm a vampire, but my teeth are straight and white. I have pale white skin. I'm a goth, in case you couldn't tell, and I wear mostly black. I love Hot Topic, and I buy all my clothes from there. For example, today I was wearing a black corset with matching lace around it and a black leather mini skirt, pink fishnets, and black combat boots. I was wearing black lipstick, white foundation, black eyeliner, and red eyeshadow. So that is the majority of the opening page of My Immortal, a very famous um, Harry Potter fanfiction. Now I'm going to read you the first physical description we get from a book called The Robber Bride by Margaret Atwood. Armfuls of dog-eared war memoirs and collections of letters and fox volumes of frontline reportage by long-forgotten journalists are stuffed into the olive green bookcase, along with several copies of Tony's two published books, Five Ambushes and Four Lost Causes. Meticulously researched, a refreshing new interpretation, say the reviews quoted on the quality paperbacks. Sensationalistic, overly digressive, marred by obsessive detail, say those not quoted. Tony's face, owl-eyed and elf-nosed, and younger than her face is now, goggles out from the back covers, frowning slightly in an attempt to look substantial. In addition to a study desk, she has an architect's drawing board with a high swiveling stool that renders her instantly taller. She uses it for marking student term papers. She likes to perch up there on her stool, swinging her short legs, with the papers on a slant in front of her, and correct from a judicious distance, as if painting. The truth is that she's getting far-sighted as well as the near-sighted she's always been. Bifocals will soon be her fate. So these are some pretty extreme ends of the spectrum, sure, but I feel like they really help illustrate the point I'm trying to make. When you're introducing your character, um, I feel like it's so important to really give a sense of who they are and not just what they look like. I feel like with fanfic-y type writing and um, like a lot of like YA writing, the focus is on making sure that the reader is exactly picturing your character physically the way that the author is picturing them. Whereas with other types of books, especially like literary fiction, I feel like the focus is more on making sure that you know who this character is is, but maybe it's okay if you picture them a little bit differently than the author. Um, that leads, I think, to more personality and verb-based introductions to the character. Um, like, for example, in The Robber Bride, we know that Tony's written two books. Um, we know that like her, the way that she grades papers, so she's clearly some kind of teacher. We've learned a lot about what she actually does, her verbs, as I like to say. Whereas with My Immortal, we're really only getting a sense of what um, this character looks like, and it's very, very specific to the point where we're getting actual celebrity, like, face look-alikes. We basically know every strand of her hair, but we don't really know much about who she is. And I think that even a lot of books that are published and do very well still struggle with this. Um, and maybe this is just, you know, a my taste sort of thing, but it's something that definitely bothers me. I think that there's something really evocative about saying someone has owlish eyes rather than saying that they have round eyes or brown eyes or something like that. Like, I like these more specific, more personalized descriptions, um, and it makes the characters more memorable even with less words actually describing them. 
The next pet peeve I really want to talk about is um, fainting to change scene. Now, this might sound insanely specific, but I swear if you read a lot of books in the YA category, especially um, fan fiction too, generally I think this is just a crutch of beginner writers, honestly, or, you know, people who haven't really learned how to change scenes um, any other way. They're just constantly knocking out their protagonist, <laughs> um, whether it be that they're poisoned, they faint from shock, from pain, um, it exhaustion. This is this is something that happens a lot, and it's it's a really interesting phenomenon because it does seem like there's certain female protagonists, especially, who are just always passing out. Uh, you see a bit of this in Twilight. Um, but it happens in manga, shoujo manga as well. Um, it's kind of a weird trope. Um, I've even done it once in my own comic Unfamiliar. It was sort of an homage, honestly, to the, uh, the trend. Um, but yeah, if you're doing that too much, I feel like it just makes it seem like you don't know how to shift from one scene to the next or how to like transport your character. So you transport them by knocking them the heck out and then they just, you know, fade back from black and the characters have moved them elsewhere to the next scene or location and for me i just think this is really clumsy really lazy and it starts to be really silly it makes your character seem extremely like weak and, and messed up um obviously if you faint in real life that does not mean that you're weak or anything. I've definitely had periods in my life where I uh, have been pretty woozy in general, and I guess if that's a main point of your character or if they're suffering with an affliction that causes them to faint a lot, that's a different kind of thing. But if you're just making your character faint, especially your female character, faint to change scenes to make them seem sort of like delicate or maybe they're one of those characters who never seem to eat, like Bella from Twilight, um, it can be sort of... Uh, I don't know, it almost comes across as like a little sexist and just a little a little strange. Um, so I highly recommend avoiding this in your own stories. Um, having your characters be unconscious for all the scene switches is just... It's, it also like really halts the momentum of your story and it keeps putting them in these scenes where people are having to take care of them and um, I don't know, it's just, <laughs> it, it really rubs me the wrong way personally. I also think I have an aversion to this just because I had read so much YA fiction when I was a young person, like when I was in elementary and middle school, I read YA all the time, and I read so much of it that there were certain tropes that really started to annoy me, and this is definitely one of the biggest ones. Like, I just, <laughs> I just couldn't stand it. Like, how, how do these characters keep getting poisoned or, um, you know, c going completely unconscious because of exhaustion or whatever. It just didn't seem, didn't seem like it made any sense and like none of the other characters were doing that all the time. So yeah, it definitely reflected negatively on a lot of these protagonists and when you're in a POV of your character, having them just fade to black from, you know, a shocking revelation, it's sort of the laziest cliffhanger possible. Um, now, uh, I would love to know if anybody in the audience actually likes this because I feel like this is one of the most like broadly unlikable um, tropes, but I would love to know if you guys uh, have a reason for using it or, or liking it. Next up, I want to talk about another appearance-based um, one, and this is very specific to YA and fanfiction. I feel like this is so common, and that is when your female character, your POV character, is basically saying like, oh, I'm very plain, I'm not pretty like so-and-so other girl, maybe it's their mom, their sister, uh, their friend. Um, they just talk about how unspecial they are, how they don't look very good, um, and then inexplicably for the rest of the series, you see people falling all over themselves trying to get this person in a relationship. Again, I'm, I bring up Bella a lot. She is the quintessential version of this girl. Like, she just thinks that she's not attractive, and she talks about that all the time, um, and yet we know, like, we know that she's attractive because all of the characters around her treat her like she's beautiful. And I just feel like it's so unrealistic. Um, 
and weird <laughs> to have your protagonist constantly be like this. Like, of course, there's such a thing as body dysmorphia or, you know, people can be their own harshest critics, but I think it goes to a really extreme place. And I think that it comes from this weird um, paradox that teen girls especially are put in where they are really put under heavy pressure to be physically attractive. Um, you know, it takes up a lot of their mental energy. At least when I was a teen, like there was a lot of stress about being ugly or being plain. Like you really want to be desirable, but at the same time, like there is nothing worse uh, according to, you know, society and, and media than being a teen girl who thinks that she's hot, you know, like that thinks that she's all that. And it seems like media was always trying to humble these types of girls. Um, they were always associating that kind of physical confidence with really negative personality traits like uh, total narcissism, cruelty, you know, like in Mean Girls, right? Regina George thinks that she's really hot and awesome. Um, and that is sort of dovetailed in with her cruelty as if those things are necessarily correlated even though in my experience honestly when people are insecure that tends to be when they actually lash out in real life so um, it's just an interesting thing I think that's where this trope comes from because we need our teen protagonist to be beautiful otherwise she has no value because you know <laughs> it really does feel like if the author isn't letting us know that like no sh people want her she's not ugly don't worry, you know, she's an important person who <laughs> is worthy because she's attractive. And then, but they also need to make sure that you don't think that she's full of herself. So we have these characters who have all the evidence in the world to know that they're beautiful, having to expressly tell the audience that they think that they're not. Um, and I don't know, I mean, even, even book series that I really liked, like Hunger Games, fall into this and I think that it's kind of a tired stereotype at this point it's something that we can probably leave behind um the whole one direction you don't know you're beautiful that's what makes you beautiful like let's just leave it <laughs> let's leave it forever because it's super annoying um when you're a reader and especially oh my gosh the worst thing for me is when they're like yeah, like, here's the reason I'm ugly. I'm too slender and, you know, I have big eyes and they make me look startled and, you know, I'm too pale. It's like they're listing off things that are considered uh, well-liked traits. Obviously, like, certain people will prefer, like, tan skin or whatever, and that's usually how they say, oh, I'm so pale. But there is a heavy encouragement to have pale skin in a lot of, you know, subcultures and... Um, lots of celebrities are pale and are considered really beautiful. So this is just, it's a fake insecurity. <laughs> it's a completely, like they never talk about how they're insecure about how red their faces get when they exert themselves unless it's like a cute blush or, you know, how visible their veins are on their wrists. You know, these are things that are like a quote unquote unattractive pale traits. It's always like, no, like my face like glows in the moonlight. It's like, <laughs> are we really supposed to believe that this character thinks this is a trait that is undesirable and we should feel sorry for them because they're so pale? Like, it, I don't know. It just, it feels like they're not respecting the intelligence of their audience. For the next one, I want to talk about the pet peeve that really prevented me from getting super into fanfic in the first place, and that is the writer writing characters really out of character. Now, I know that this does not bother everybody, but for me, it was something that made it hard for me to ever read uh, fan-inspired works, and I don't necessarily know why, because when it came to fan art, I didn't mind people taking liberties, aging characters up, giving them totally different subcultural fashion styles and stuff to me that was totally okay but for some reason hearing the characters like speak and say things that i thought they would never say um or basically just parrot the author's own personality and voice um it really bothered me it made me feel like annoyed i guess and the way that this affects published works or things that are not fan fiction or are no longer fan fiction is when every character has the same voice. So they all have the author's voice. It feels like the author is putting on different outfits um, of the characters, but at the end of the day, if you look at how the characters joke around, what they think, the conclusions they come to, they're all just one person. Um, this is something that I really notice um, in a lot of media, not even just books, but 
um, cartoons and movies, it's really noticeable when characters actually have a completely different way of speaking and thinking than the other. Um, so again, to bring up the robber bride, I feel like when I switch perspectives in that story, the whole world looks different through those different eyes. So one character, for example, is extremely scientific and she tries not to be sentimental. And even the way that she looks at the world is like that. When we switch into her friend's perspective, who is someone who has um, a lot of like new age type beliefs, who really believes in things like serendipity and luck and um, basically magic in the world, you it completely changes the things that you're focusing on during her chapter because she's not talking as much about real physical things. She's talking about her dreams. She's thinking about um, more poetic ways of interpreting the world rather than being very literal. Um, and I think that that's so refreshing and exciting. Now, right before I started reading The Robber Bride, I read a different book called Patricia Wants to Cuddle, which is a book um, about essentially like contestants from The Bachelor uh, being sent to an island uh, near Seattle and uh, Bigfoot is involved. Anyway, it's like it's like a light fun read, but um, my main annoyance about it was that when we switched character perspectives, I could never remember which character I was on because at the end of the day, they kind of all thought the same, even though they were supposed to have really different worldviews. Like one of the characters is supposed to be quite religious, um, whereas other characters think that religion is stupid. Um, but unless they were talking specifically about that difference, they didn't seem to have any other ways of interpreting the world. They didn't have huge differences in the way that they thought. And it made it feel like every character was just an iteration of the author. Um, this is something that's extremely hard to master. It's not an easy thing to do to fully embody somebody else to the point where they actually feel like a different person rather than having your own voice sort of meld onto each of your characters. So it's something that I think is worth aspiring to and that I really appreciate as a reader myself. So those were some of my biggest pet peeves about fan fiction. Definitely feel free to disagree in the comments. I'm very curious to see what you guys think of this and uh, let me know what your biggest pet peeves in fanfic are as well. And I'll see you in the next one. A huge thank you to all of my patrons, including Grexius, Olia, Liddy Savior, Roro, Rayons, Vorpalmat, Brandon Stark, CB, Crosby F, Lucy Amajiki, Livlip, Salty Jackrabbit, Raven's Crow, Zocelot, T Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Do, Kadaria, Deadly Nightshade Art, Astral Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Subaki, Cutie Pie, Rune Raincrow, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, JJ Jade, and of course, Blah 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 Blah.